I was going to try to keep this in line with what's going on out there at Rock the Desert. So I wanted to talk about the rock. So if I say the rock, what do you think of? A living water. Is that all? That also, is that all? Anything else? All of us through the desert. Okay. I want to start off by reading Numbers 31, 1 through 18. So I'm going to kind of go back between the last few portions. And the portion this week is... Uh, Matot and Masay, I think. Tribes and journeys, stages. But uh, they're all kind of tied in. And uh, I think we're, we're getting a message that sometimes we may overlook. And uh, Numbers 31, 1 through 18. And y'all speak unto Moshe, saying, Avenge the children of Israel. And by the way, when Rodney said, I'm upright today, uh, some people actually pronounce Israel Yashar El, which means upright with God. If you take away the vowel points, it actually says that, upright with God. And I always say, how, how are you upright with God? And believing in the Son, the one he sent. And children of Israel, he said, avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shall thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moshe spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war. They had just taken their, their next head count, their census, getting ready for war. And let them go against the Midianites and avenge Yah of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. Don't let anyone ever fool you into thinking we should be completely a passive people. We are in a war. And Moshe sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites as Yah commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian besides the rest of them that were slain, Evi and Rechim and Zur and Hur and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of the Midian, Midian captives and their little ones and took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. And they burned all their cities wherein they dwelt, and all the goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moshe and Eleazar the priest, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by the Yarden near Jericho. And Moshe and Eleazar the priest, and all the princes of the congregations went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moshe was wroth with the officers of the, of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moshe said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against Yah in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of Yah. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known a man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. I want to back up to Numbers 25, <clears throat> 10, 18. And y'all spoke unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them. 
that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. And he shall have it in his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a chief among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zur. He was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And y'all spake unto Moshe, saying, Vex the Midianites. And that's what we had just read. And smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you. In the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. I wanted to go back to that because I said I wanted to keep with the theme of the rock. And uh, we've got rock the desert going on. Spiritually speaking, we're in the desert now. We're on the edge waiting to enter in the promise. I've been talking about this the last few times I've been up here. And Tim, when he was here last Shabbat during the Torah study, and I, I hope he would have expanded on it a little more, but he brought this up. And then he brought up that Cosby or Cosby is the Hebrew number 3579, which means false. And it comes from the Hebrew 3576, Kazad. It means to lie and to deceive. This is the woman that the man of Israel was with under that tent. Her father's name is Zur, and that's a Hebrew number 6698, a rock. So this Israelite man was with the daughter of a rock, and she brought forth falsehood into the camp, not outside the camp, into the camp. This Zur, a rock, figuratively, means a refuge. Midianites, from the Hebrew 4079, means brawling. But more than that, it means contentious. It comes back from the Hebrew 1777, Dean, where we get like the Dean of a, a college or something like that. And it means to rule, to judge. But the one that I found most interesting was it means also to strive as if at law. Now we come into these congregations in our day and age, we like to say under one umbrella and all that. But throughout our land here, being the United States of America, we have all these different houses. <clears throat> and when you come under them, I see that in many of them, listening to them, they like to strive, especially at the law. Most of them want to push it away, telling you. And I think that is Cosby. That is falsehood. And that's coming from the other rock. So what is Father trying to tell us? To warn us about what goes on under these, what I called the kubas that I showed last time. A domed cavity is what they were under. It wasn't an old hell. It wasn't a, the, the old hell moed. It said a kubah. I pointed that out last time I was up here. What is he trying to tell us about what goes on under that? But it could be shaped like this. It doesn't have to have a particular shape. Last time Rico was here, I tried to draw it out of him because I seen him online, and he said, I don't think it was the tent of meeting like they said. He mentioned Kuba. So when he was here, but he said he didn't have any more to expand on that with me or to offer in his, his learning yet. But then I was watching, some of you guys are familiar with Dr. Stephen Pigeon. I was watching him online, and he wasn't even talking about this portion. He was talking about the U.S. Capitol. But then he made the comment, what they do under that kubah. So I know he gets what's being said there. He knows that 
that has spiritual meaning to it. So he mentioned it uh, right away. I tell my wife, there, he, there it is. He, he got it. You know, he, he's <clears throat> talking about what our leaders do under this, these areas or these coverings. And just by accident this week, I heard a man talk about the art, artwork that's in Rome's chapel. I guess they call it the Sistine Chapel. Is that, is that what they call the one, Ismelda, that you went to, the Sistine Chapel that has the dome? And just by accident, I was listening to something, and he wasn't even talking about this portion, and he started talking about how under that dome they mix figures of prophets, maybe, and apostles, and in between them they have pagan things. So they're, they're doing the same thing. They're mixing as they did here in the wilderness in the matter of Baal Peor. But let's get back to the rock. I want to read a little bit in Deuteronomy 31, 28. That's where I want to start. The whole point of this is there's more than one rock. And we got to know who our rock is and cling to him. Deuteronomy 31, 28. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside and evil will befall you in the latter days. Usually when you hear that latter days for us here on this end of the, the plan, we should perk up our ears because you will do evil in the sight of Yah to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moshe spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they are ended. Give ear, O you heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. I've looked all those words up before, and that's four different ways that moisture come down out of heaven. So no matter how you receive it, these words are coming down upon us, whether it's with a light dew or a pouring shower. Because I will publish the name of Yah, ascribe ye greatness unto our El. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. That's our rock. Now skip down to 32, 15 through 18. And this is what most people say is a pet name for Israel when he gets fat and happy. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he, Ben Israel, forsook Elohim, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not unto Elohim. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came up newly, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten Elohim that formed thee. Now we're going to go down to 32.29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and that Yah had shut them up? Now listen to this. For their rock is not our rock. He's telling you there's two rocks right there. Their rock is not our rock. 
even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and the grapes of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their vine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of ass. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. Remember this talked at the beginning at the latter times. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. For Yah shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone. Now, if we consider the United States of America to be a stronghold of Christianity, if you want to put it that way, it's looking like our power is almost gone when you see the things that are happening in this nation. That there's no power left to the congregations. And there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? This is what we need to be careful. If we choose the wrong rock, this is what Yah says. When trouble comes, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Let them be your refuge. You don't want to trust in me as your rock? You want another rock? When trouble comes, we're always told, be careful like the people in the wilderness. Oh, that we had died here in the wilderness. Okay, according to your word, you're going to get what you want. So we need to be very careful because in the end times, it's prophesied that some things are going to happen that as we say, will blow our minds. Their rock is not our rock. That's what he said. So let's go to Ezekiel 28 and verse 1. And I'll be reading through 19. The word of Yah came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith Adonai Elohim, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. This one's got a lot of knowledge. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, Thou hast increased thy riches. And thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith Adonai Elohim, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Now this is sounding to me about as antichrist as you can get. But he's very wise and very beautiful. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised. 
By the hand of strangers, for I have spoken of it, I have spoken it, saith Adonai Elohim. Moreover, the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Son of man, take a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Went from a prince to a king. And say unto him, Thus saith Adonai Elohim, Thou sellest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, the only one I've read of a man that was in the garden of God on what's revealed to us is Adam and Hava. But this says to the king of Tyrus, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. If you're the creator, you're God. If you were created, you're not God. But these, they think they're God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart is lifted, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall cover thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Now if you notice in here, it talks a lot about thy traffic, thy merchandise. That's making money. Should be worship and praise in Yah, but that's making money. <clears throat> you see this going on all over, right? People trying to cash in when they should be. In the day that this one was created, he he had uh, what what was that there about his pipes and all that, the tabrets and the pipes. A lot of people think this is talking about the adversary, Satan. It says he was a cherub, and he's going to be cast down. To me, it makes perfect sense. That's what it's talking about. And if you go back to, I think it's Isaiah 14, it says Lucifer, but it's something like Hallel or Halali, which means comes from the word where they get to praise. So the, they connect these two as being really the same, and he's doing the same thing, wanting to exalt himself. He wants to be the rock. He wants to be your rock. This king, Tyrus, he is king rock. Now you wonder sometimes why, why they translate things into the English the way they do. Is it a cover-up? Who knows? Maybe it's just their way of understanding when they did it. But the Hebrew number 6865 is Zor. It's pronounced and spelled almost the same way as Cosby's daughter, the rock. So he's king rock. And you see he's beautiful and all that. He presents himself as light. You've read it in the New Testament. No wonder 
that he presents himself as an angel alike, that his ministers will do so also? Where do you usually find ministers? They're usually in a congregation. In the assembly. I told my dad that my dad's, you know, I don't know what's in a man's heart, but I don't think he's a believer. But I told him one time when we were talking about things, I think the adversary does his best work in places like this. If he can get a foothold, we're told that in Jude, certain men creep in unaware, you know, and in other places. And he was kind of shocked. What are you talking about? He does his best work in church. Yeah, <laughs> religion's one of his best things. You've seen in the in the Torah portion we were starting out with how they were really setting up tabernacles to other gods and participating in their sacrifices and everything, but it was right within the camp. It's all, in a camp, you have all kinds of tents. What's going on in all those tents? We need to be careful. And if we look at that word, czar, zor, you ever heard of a Russian czar? You ever heard of a Roman Caesar? How about a German Kaiser? All little man gods. When you look at these people, they usually have carried these titles, they, they exalt themselves above their, their assembly. Try to make it where they're dictators, what they are. Try to make it where their word is final. You don't question it or else what? Usually, you die. So Father's warning is that there are two rocks. Our rock and their rock. Our refuge and their refuge. It's the words that come out of their mouths that's usually what you got to watch out for. I mean, we, we have some violent people in this world and if they know you're especially Jew or Christian, they'll try to take you out. They get the chance. Like I say, we're not to be that passive where we just let people run all over us. But it's usually the words because it's, it's a deception. As we said with Cosby, it means to lie, to deceive. They're usually going to try to tell you things, whether it's scripture or not, to make merchandise of you. So you bring, you know, pass the plate around, drop a little bit in there. We really want to get holy, <clears throat> pass it around twice, maybe a third time. Dig deep into your pockets, right? Sow your seed, and you'll get a blessing in return. <laughs> Let's hear some strong warnings about what could happen to us if we listen to some of these lies and all that, which usually turns you away from the real rock, which is Messiah. It says that rock that followed them in the wilderness. The church, it says in the English, taking you all the way back to when they wandered in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness, that rock that followed them was Christ. But if we don't listen to the Word that became flesh, like I said, sometimes the things we say is, okay, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. You know, when I come up here, I, I speak a lot of, on these things rather <clears throat> than what we might call the good stuff, the blessings and all that. I know all that's there. But like I say, we're, we're in a war. So I like to keep reminding and even reminding myself, you know, don't let your guard down. It says the end's going to be the worst it'll ever get. So we need to remember that. <clears throat> but even back here, these two readings are going to come from the, the New Testament. I'm going to go to Romans first. <clears throat> 2,000 years ago, things are happening already where people are being drawn away. And you're going to see examples of where he says, okay, basically if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. So I'm going to start in Romans 1 and verse 21. And he's going on and he says, because that when they knew God, See, they already knew God. They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became, they became vain in their imaginations and their, and their foolish heart was darkened. 
professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now listen to this, because this is where, where we got to be careful, because <clears throat> we need to re retain God in our knowledge and seek Him, or else this will happen. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, Cosby, and worshiped and served the creation more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. God gave them up. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. Men with men work in that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That's scary. I mean, you look that word up in a dictionary, <laughs> that, that's scary to think that God's going to just give you over to a reprobate mind. But that's what it says. It's God that gave them over because they didn't want to retain him in their knowledge. We see that move in our country. We are to teach these words diligently to our children, it says. So no matter what's going on outside your house and your walls, don't be slack. I know we all like to be entertained and watch other things, hear other things and all that, but we need to give Yah His, his due. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. That's why we need to cling to Him and what He's done for us. You know, we've done some of these things. Worthy of death. When you compare yourself to God's holiness. So cling to Him who's paid the price for you. Who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So we need to repent if we've done any of those things and not have pleasure in them that do them. Now it started off talking about the sexual stuff, but then he goes into a whole list of things. And I know that's going on. It's, it's rampant in our communities right now, and a lot of people want to point the finger at only that one sin, but sin is sin. I just read in the, the Midland paper where a, a daughter came out and she was going to start that pride movement over there, and the mother, the mother... She, uh, where was that at? She was having pleasure in them that do those things. She was having pleasure in her daughter and proud of her, what she was starting over there. But as a mother, you should at least be warning about any sin, that sin leads to death. 
And just because the price was paid, what does it say? If you trample the Son of God underfoot, if one or, one or two witnesses condemned you under Moshe, what about now? It says, what if you trample the Son of God underfoot? He, he's, he's saying it's even worse if we do it now. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to start in 2 1. It says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, prayers and intercessions. You know, we try, we should try to do that more often throughout the day. It don't have, have to be something elaborate where you're getting down on your knees, laying prostrate or anything. You can do it when you're driving, walking, working, whatever. But we should be trying to make more prayers and intercession for not just our United States of America, but for the world. But most of all, in that prayer, that He would send His Spirit to them. Help turn someone around through His power of His Ruach. And given them thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of Elohim, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. He wants all men everywhere to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Thy word is truth, it is written. For there is one Elohim and one mediator between Elohim and men, the man, Messiah, Joshua, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Messiah and lie not. He says he don't have any of those lies and falsehood going on with him that he's speaking the truth. A teacher of the nations in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Somebody should have stopped me. <laughs> I wasn't even in the right book. I just noticed, I was like, I'm going on too far and I'm not seeing what I'm, I'm wanting to see there. It was Second Thessalonians 2.1, I was in Timothy. That was a good word, maybe. Maybe we needed it. I wanted to continue on with the, as he said in Romans, the reprobate mind. So Second Thessalonians 2.1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Joshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Messiah is at hand. This is the first warning when they asked how it's going to be to the Messiah. He said the same thing Paul is saying here. Let no man deceive you by any means. The first warning. Let no man deceive you. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Some people think that's what? You've heard it probably preached. The rapture. But the word is apost apostasia, I think. Apostasy. A turning to the other rock. That's what I think it is anyway. You can make up your own mind. I don't think it's the rapture. And that the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness doth already work. 
Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Adonai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. So that tells me Satan, that false walk, rock, is going to be doing a great work and that the coming of our rock is after that work. Like I said, everybody looks at these things a different way. But it says the one who's going to destroy even him who is coming, whose coming is after the working of Satan, who has all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Elohim sent them strong delusion. Now who sent the delusion? They didn't want to believe the truth. So Elohim sends them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Lies and falsehood. That they might be all damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Most of what I've got today is, is readings, so <clears throat> I'm going to go next to Isaiah 51. And I'm going to start at, let me make sure I get the right book this time. <laughs> Isaiah 51, verse 1. I'm going to read through 8. says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yah, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. He's telling you there to look to that rock. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto the God. I added that, but that's he's at least telling you. Look unto Abraham, your father. Unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For Yah shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of Yah. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Listen unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a Torah shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles or the islands shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Listen unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my Torah. Fear ye not the reproach of men, you're going to get plenty of that if you talk Torah. Neither be you afraid of the revilings, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. So we want to be among his people and remember the rock from whence we are hewn. Jeremiah 23, 23, 1 through 29. It says, Woe unto the pastors. Now he's talking to people that are under a tent 
a building, whatever. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith Yah. Therefore thus saith Yah, Elohim of Israel, unto the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not vis visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith Yah. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where they have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith Yah. Behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king, our king rock shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. They may have times of peace in the past, but we know that's not happening right now. They're not dwelling safely. Hundreds, thousands of rockets coming at them all the time. And probably only the majority of them Judah and not Israel. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yah, our righteousness. Yud he vav ke Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yah, that they shall no more say, Yah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. We're still always talking about that during the Passover and everything. But he says that day is going to end. But Yah liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of Yah and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers for be because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both the prophet and the priest are profane. Yet in my house have I found their wickedness, saith Yah. It says, Yea, in my house. That's why a lot of times I just like to read, so I don't have these words coming out that maybe his spirit's not working in me. Maybe I'm imagining some vain things, so it's better to use his words in his house. But he says, in mine house have I found wickedness, saith Yah. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith Yah. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people, Israel, to err. Now what that tells me, you know, the northern tribes, some people think they're all united right now. I think... Most of them don't even know who they are, and a lot of people think they're being called to Messiah first. But they bring in elements of false worship that come from Baal, and they do err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies also. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus say Yah of hosts, concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. Sounds like I read what I read in Deuteronomy 32 when it says their rock is not our rock, their wine is the venom of asp, and their grapes are the grapes of Gomorrah. He's saying the same thing here, basically. And from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth. 
and to all the land. Thus saith Yahshua of old, hearken, listen not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of Yah. They stay, say still unto them that despise me, Yah hath said, you shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of Yah, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of Yah is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Yah shall not return and he, until he shall have executed, until he, shall, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. There he goes again mentioning the latter days. In the latter days, you shall consider what he's saying here perfectly because he is coming to bring judgment. We always say it starts at his house. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words, then they, they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith Yah, and not a God afar off? <laughs> this one's good here. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Do not I, says Yah, fill heaven and earth, saith Yah. If we think we can hide any of our actions, but even our very thoughts, says he knows the intentions of our heart and what goes on. We can't hide anything from him. The eyes of Yah go to and fro on the earth, seeing what men do, whether their acts are good or evil, it is written. I have heard what the prophets have, what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed a dream. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart which think to cause my people to forget my name. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. You read it all throughout the Bible. And they tell you, don't say the name. When I did, uh, I think it was Amor a while back, I said people say a lot of things, but they don't want you to say the name anymore, hardly. And he knows the intentions of your heart whether you pronounce it different from you the way you do it or you do it or I do it. He knows whether you're trying to glorify him or not. If you just want to get, get the short end of it, just say, yeah, hallelujah. That's, that's the way it goes. They caused my people to forget my name for their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name, for Baal, for the Lord. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith Yah? And this is the main reason I come here. We were talking about lies and all that from the very beginning. But then he says, Is not my word like a fire, saith Yah, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So he knows there's another rock. He said his words like a hammer is going to break that rock into pieces. The day is coming. So breaketh the rock in pieces, what rock? Their rock, not our rock. 
But his word is the hammer that breaks that rock into pieces. We should know a lot about the word also. So we have, you know, the word's also a sword, it says, and I think in Ephesians. He gives it the word many titles. But we should have our weapons with us. And if we don't have to be ready at hand just to let it come out, sometimes we can just tell him, well, show me. And let's read the whole thing and try to put it in context and see if those things, what they say, are true or not. You know, Berean, I looked that up before, it basically means, has the same meaning when you follow the word back, is Hebrew. So let's hear, I'm almost <clears throat> done here. Let's hear what the rock, let's hear the rock talk to another rock. I'm going to go to Joel 3. And I'd, I'd like to close <clears throat> with a short statement after that, but I'd like to read all of Joel 3. And we'll hear the rock talk to another rock. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. See, he mentioned specifically here Judah and, Ju and Jerusalem. And like I said earlier, I think the majority of the people who are in the land now who have Jerusalem are Judah, personal opinion from what I've studied. But he mentions just those two. He don't really right now mention Israel or the northern kingdom. And he's going to gather them all, and he will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Now he mentions Israel. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. And this is the main reason I came here. He says, Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre? What have ye have to do with me, O rock? That's what Tyre means. It's one rock talking to the other. What have ye to do with me, O rock? And Zidon, you fishers and catchers of men, because that's what that means, what do you have to do with me? That false rock who fishes and hunts for men. And all the coasts of Palestine or Philistia, all you people who wallow in the dirt, will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, I will return your recompense upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things into their temples. You know, we're referred to, Yah's people are referred to as gold and silver being refined. They've taken it into their own temples. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether ye have sold them and return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah and they shall sell them unto the Sabians to a people far off for Yah hath spoken it. Proclaim you this among the nations. Prepare See, they talk peace, peace even right now. But Yah said He's going to gather them all. And He says, proclaim along the nations, prepare war. Prepare war and make up the, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yah. Did anyone have any thought about that verse that I just read? It says, to that place, 
Cause thy mighty ones to come down. Oh, yeah. To me, that's saying he's calling on the Elohim. You gather for war to that place, cause your mighty ones to come down. Oh, yeah. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. I believe that means the valley of decision, right? I think it might have set it up there. But anyway, I believe that's what Jehoshaphat means. Come to the valley of decision. Decide which rock you're going to stand with. See if that rock will save you. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get down, for the press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. You get that in the book of Revelation too, where one angel comes down, puts in a sickle, and harvests grapes. As one guy put it, <laughs> who harvests grapes with a sickle? But then the wine press is trodden down and the blood overflows. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yah is near in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord. Has anyone ever, have you, have you ever done studies on the day of the Lord? Uh, what is that one, Albert? Who are you to desire the day of the Lord? Uh, we don't really desire that. We desire His presence, His righteousness, but that's a day of darkness and gloom. And we better hope we're within His sukkah and under His hoopah, wherever that may be, when that day comes. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yah also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from you shall I am. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yah will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am Yah, your Elohim, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth of the house of Yah. You can read that. Water is coming out in Revelation and Ezekiel. Even the, the Dead Sea coming alive again in that day. And the water shall be, and the water, and the water, and shall water the valley of Shittim. It's talking about the, the camp where they were before they went in, Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For Yah dwelleth in Zion. So there's going to be a battle between the rocks. We proclaim that our rock is going to be victorious. But there's going to be great deception from now until then. Like I said, that's why I tried to... I was hoping Rico, you know, he's very knowledgeable in many things. I was hoping I could draw more out of him, and I've looked for other things about these kubas and all that, and how our people enter in under the covering with other people and all. But like I say, Dr. Stephen Pigeon mentioned it even of our dome at the Capitol, so he's getting what y'all trying to tell us uh, just recently at the dome. They, they had a 
uh, I think he was a member of Kabad, if you guys have ever heard of him, them. But he was, he was praying and preaching the Noahide laws that a lot of people are talking about, not the Ten Commandments. And, uh, and then he was asking everybody to say amen. I think we need, if we know what amen means, that's that. And uh, that stands and another meeting. Which one? Let it be so. So let it be that we need to be careful. And it means as it is written, because that's what they always say when they get done praying. As it is written. That's what Yeshua said. Yeshua did say that many times. Have you not read, he said? It is written, especially when the adversary, as we're in the wilderness, as he approached him in the wilderness, that's what he said. It is written. We've talked about that before. That's the way how you de defeat the adversary. The Word did it. He's our Word. The Word that smashes the rock, that rock, to pieces. But we need what I'm saying with all that, and everybody apparently knows what amen means. You, you need to be careful when people say stuff and then, you know, ask you to say amen. You might want to carefully consider things before, you know, we're supposed to be slow to, to speak and quick to hear things. So, it's, you know, these things are for our warning. It says in the New Testament, everything is written for our warning. And they haven't crossed over yet. And we certainly haven't crossed over yet into any kind of promise. You know, we've, we've received the promise, but we're not there yet. And the deception is going to be rampant, and it's going to get worse. So I'll close with this, that we remember when Solomon, the Prince of Peace, was about to become king, take the kingdom from his father, David, the Prince of Peace, was about to become king. David's son, Adonijah, good name. Yah is Lord, right? David's son, Adonijah, tried to steal the kingdom. And he drew many to himself. And they met at the stone of Zoheleth. Has anyone ever looked that up? Serpent Rock. Adonijah, good godly name, tried to steal the kingdom. He drew all these men to himself, probably promising them many things, and they met that serpent rock. I feel the same scenario will happen in the latter days, which I always say we're one day closer. Every day we are upright, as Rodney said, standing and have breath in us. Scenario will happen again in the latter days. And at that time, I pray that all, including myself, will remember the rock from whence you are hewn. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for watching a teaching from Amet HaTorah. If you are ever in the Odessa area, we would love to welcome you to our Shabbat service, 11 a.m. every Sabbath. For more information or for more teachings, feel free to find us on the web, www.amethatoraodessa.com. Also, you can find us on Facebook. Thank you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.